In this video, I'm going over seven do's and three don'ts for fall lawn care. I'm gonna tell you basically what I'm gonna be doing to my lawn and what I'm not gonna be doing. And I hope the video is helpful for you. Today's video is sponsored by Yardbook. I've been using Yardbook for my lawn care business since 2015. If you need a software for your lawn care business, go to yardbook.com and sign up for a free account. All right, let's hop right to it. What are the seven do's, things you should be doing to your lawn? Well, number one is if you're not gonna be overseeding your lawn, and a lot of us with warm season lawns, we don't overseed. Some people overseed a warm season lawn with uh, with rye grass, but for me, I'm not overseeding. I've got a Bermuda grass on. Then you definitely want to put out a pre-emergent application. Now, yesterday, I was talking to some people, and they said, "Jason, when do I need to do that pre-emergent application?" Somebody said, "I did it Labor Day." Somebody said, "I'm going to do it in November." I, you know, I, I don't remember all the exact conversations. But I tell people, I said, you know, uh, weeds germinating oftentimes has to do with, with soil temperature and moisture and things like that. You know, so if it, if it gets cold and it has it rain, there's not much moisture, probably not a lot that's going to germinate. But a lot of times what happens is a rain comes through and then that cools it off. And I think, well, that's when a lot of those cool season weeds are going to germinate. So just practically speaking, I was advising people, I said, you know, before those temperatures get down in the, in the 50s at night or low 50s and you get that cool front, then I would try to get my pre-emergent down. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama market. For, for us, I started spraying my pre-emergence this year on my customers around mid-September and carried on into early October. For doing that, you can use Prodiamine. I'm using Spectacle Flow, which, which is a superior product, but at a, a significantly higher price. I'm mixing that with Simazine, and I'm also putting 2,4-D and Metzofuron in there on my Bermuda and Zoysia lawns. On my Centipede and St. Augustine lawns, I'm using Prodiamine with the Simazine, and that's it. Second thing I'm gonna encourage you to do, and I'm just talking about what I'm doing, this is a flower bed area that's a mess, okay? This is some Mexican petunia, some lantana, all these things are gonna die back this winter. I'm probably gonna cut them back myself. I, a matter of fact, uh, one time I took my zero turn and ran over this lantana and people freaked out. Oh, that's so terrible. I'm gonna probably do it again. So uh, this is big canna lilies. All this stuff's gonna be going away soon. It's supposed to go down to low 40s tonight. I'm gonna probably cut it down because if you wait till it, it freezes, then it becomes all mushy and nasty. So sometimes I'll cut it down before that happens. But once I do that, then I'm gonna come in with a fresh layer of pine straw or mulch. I know some people don't like the, the pine straw. A lot of people in the South do use pine straw. So cutting down a lot of this stuff like, that are gonna be dying out with the cold weather and go ahead and bring in fresh straw that's gonna look a lot more presentable. Now, the third thing I want to tell you to do is to water your lawn. Now, let me just tell you what I would do in this situation. I was about ready to turn off all water a couple of weeks ago. So it's, it's cooling off. You know, we'd had some rain. Well, then what happened? It just, it, we had a very dry September and it stayed hot. It wasn't crazy hot, but it's just kind of hanging around 85 degrees with no rain for weeks. But I noticed with some of my customers, they haven't been watering their lawn basically at all. What you don't want is your yard just going into wintertime on life support. I saw a customer the other day, he's a centipede backyard, and his, his centipede doesn't look great, it doesn't get a lot of sunlight, and it's kind of thin, but he had let it get so crispy brown, and so I, I said, hey, you know, I, I know it's, it's cooling off a little bit, I said, I would just soak that backyard one more good time if you don't mind. Um, because what I hate to happen is it, it just goes into winter looking terrible. Then we get a, a hard winter, you know, a colder winter. And then it comes out in the spring not looking good. And they're like, why do my yard look good? Well, you know, it may have something to do with how drought stressed it was going into winter. So for me personally, uh, if, if we're getting plenty of rain, you know, that's great. It doesn't need as much water in October, in my opinion, as it would in August. But if it hasn't rained for weeks, you just don't want it going in there super dry. So I'm going to keep watering until we get some good rains and then the weather cools off and then done. I'm turning our irrigation off. I probably won't turn it back on, you know, until, until May would be my thought is what I would encourage my customers to do. So no, don't water all winter long, but don't let you go into winter drought stress. Rest. Another thing you can do in the fall is your tough perennial weed. So this is an example of Dallas grass here. And I think this is a great time to go after it. So if I spray this with Tribute Total now in October and then maybe again in November, 
you can have a, a serious effect on it. What I've been using, I learned this from somebody else, I've been using a high rate of tribute total and the high rate of sulfitrazone or dismiss and spraying it, getting great results. I think if you do that two times, about three weeks apart, then you can control Dallas grass. The fall is a great time to do it. If you got a Bermuda grass line, if it goes dormant in the winter, you can also work on the Dallas grass with glyphosate. Now the trick here is understanding which weeds are annual weeds and which ones are perennial weeds. This Dallas grass is a perennial weed, so I want to try to knock it out, okay? It's going to be come back from that same root next year. It, it may go a little bit dormant over the winter, but it, it's not going to go away. You know, it's, it's still there. If I've got a yard full of crabgrass, which is an annual weed, where I live, it's going to get below freezing not too long from now. So I'm just going to let the winter kill that, and then next year I can put out my pre-emergent in about February, and hopefully that's going to get ahead of most of that crabgrass. So I'm not worried about running around here in the fall knocking out a bunch of annual weeds that the cold weather is going to kill for me. But these perennial weeds, fall can be a good time to go after those. The fifth thing I wanted to mention is, hey, use this fall and winter time to enjoy a little break from your yard. I'm personally tired of mowing grass for this year, okay? I just, I am. I, I've got several acres, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy when the yard looks good, but I'm also ready for a break. So take some downtime and find some other things to do besides mess with your lawn. The other thing I'm going to plan on doing this fall, and I do this a lot, is uh, we've, we've had a, a rough winter last year and we lost some stuff. You see this azalea, I let it get too dry and it died out. So oftentimes the fall can be a good time, at least here in the south, to plant your shrubs. So I'm going to look to do this probably in November. Uh, somebody has asked me the other day about planting fruit trees. I said, well, I'd, I'd probably do it in, in November. And that can be a good time to transplant stuff too. Now, the danger is, and this happened to me last year, I planted some stuff and then right around Christmas, we got down into single digits and it really damaged some stuff and maybe even killed some things. So, I mean, usually where I live in Alabama, you, you can plant it just about any time in the winter and be fine. But hopefully if I do it in November, it has time to get a little bit established before the coldest weather might come in January. And, and hopefully it's not so cold that it's gonna cause damage to a plant. But honestly, uh, that cold weather that we had last year in our area, I don't think it would have mattered if it was a newly planted shrub or an established shrub. It's probably still gonna sustain damage, though more likely to cause damage to a newly shrub. But if fall can be a great time to plant shrubs, give it time to get established before you've got hot weather coming the next year. And the last thing I'm gonna tell you to do, and this is what I did to my yard this week, I've got grass clippings laid all over here. You can think whatever you want of it, but I'm not getting out here raking or bagging my yard. I've got several acres of Bermuda grass. But what I do on the last cut of the year, uh, it's getting colder and I said, I'm tired of mowing this grass. So I dropped the deck down and cut it about a half inch shorter than I had been cutting. And what I'm trying to do at that point is a couple things. One, I'm telling the grass, don't grow anymore. I'm tired of mowing you. So I'm just cutting it lower and, and putting it out of its misery for the year because I don't want to mow the grass anymore. The other thing I'm doing is I'm going ahead and taking it down a little bit now so that next spring there won't be as much dormant grass that I'm going to have to to try to cut down even further which I like to do early in the year is I like to cut my Bermuda short which lets the sunlight get down to the roots warm the soil quicker and give me a faster green up so I took mine down lower got clippings laid everywhere I'm okay with that but hopefully that would be the last cut of the year other than just mulching up some leaves and things like that now what about things that you should not do? The three don'ts I've got, and I've got more do's and don'ts, but the don'ts, I would say, if you're going to overseed, then make sure that you don't put down your pre-emergent before you overseed. Now this happened to me uh, a few years ago. I had a customer that I sprayed his front yard. I've shared this story before, but he didn't let me know that he wanted to overseed. He overseed his backyard and it looked great, um, but this year he decided to overseed his front yard, but he didn't tell me. And so I go back and, and look at his yard in the, in the winter time and there was very few little sprigs of ryegrass that had sprouted up because I had already sprayed a pre-emergent. That's what the pre-emergent does. It keeps those, you know, it's gonna kill that seed shortly after germination. So it, the pre-emergent did exactly what it was supposed to do and he basically wasted his seed and I don't think he's, he's tried again. He hadn't communicated with me. So if you're gonna overseed, definitely don't put your pre-emergent out. And I would say for me, I would just live with some weeds 
um, because the ryegrass is going to probably hide a lot of the weeds like you'll say you get some poa annual or something like that well another option is you could wait till it cools off till some of the cool season weeds are germinated go ahead and spray with like a post emergent to kill some of those weeds so let's just say i i came in there and i sprayed you know 2,4-D with revolver and the 2,4-D is going to kill some of your raw leaf weeds the revolver might knock out any poa annual already germinated and then wait another week or two and overseed after that application okay because you can't spray the revolver once you've you've got overseed because it's going to knock out your ryegrass so there there are other strategies personally i wouldn't worry about that i just overseed it and, and mow your ryegrass yes there's going to be a few weeds in there they're not going to be nearly as noticeable with the thick healthy ryegrass another thing to consider in the fall i feel like i used to do this a lot i would trim people's hedges right head in the fall and it's probably fine in a lot of situations but i think as far as best practices go a lot of these shrubs are going to bloom in the spring and they're blooming on old wood meaning that if i cut them off right now i might be cutting off next year's blooms the other thing you might be doing if i trim them right now in the fall is they might put up some new tender growth that might have a hard time when we get a hard freeze okay that tender growth gonna get zapped by the winter so things like azaleas even these lower petalums here's a, a, a little azalea right here better to, to prune them late in the summer better to prune them in the summer like azaleas a lot of times people say don't prune them after the fourth of july because you might be cutting off next year's blooms lower petalums you know after they bloom you could cut them off in the summer and shape them uh, but you can again you can do it now but you might be putting out tender growth that gets out by the winter and you might be cutting off some of your next year's blooms now some shrubs are going to bloom on new wood i believe an example of that would be like a limelight hydrangea so those i can wait and prune like in the winter time like maybe i prune that in february or so and then it's going to put out some new growth in the spring that's going to bloom on that new wood so you know a lot of times so yeah i understand is a shrub going to be blooming on old wood or new wood and the last thing i'll tell you not to do in this for a warm season lawn is in the fall i'm not going to fertilize the yard okay the yard's transitioning in dormancy so i'm not worried about that i'm gonna wait until next year when it's starting to grow and it can use the fertilizer now if you have a, a cool season lawn or you overseeded your warm season lawn with cool season grass and, and you plant it and once that ryegrass got established and, and it you know during the cold weather i don't think it really grows that much but next year it starts to really take off and I, it may be different depending on where you live but let's just say in my area if i, I put some fertilizer out uh in february or something and when it's starting to warm up and that ryegrass can really benefit from that and take off but for those of us with warm season lawns i would not worry about putting fertilizer out as my grass transitions in dormancy Hey, I hope the video's been helpful. I'm Jason Creel. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Hope to meet some of you at the Equip Expo this year. Also, also want to mention the 2023. Also want to mention the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference coming up February 23rd and 24th in Springville, Alabama. Go to LawnCareLife.com and click on Conference. You can see the details there. A lot of people have already registered for that. Also, if you want to get a weed control and fertilization like me, you can go to LawnCareLife.com and check out the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. I'm Jason Creel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.